The Bank of Canada not winning any popularity contests as they raise their key interest rate by another 25 basis points. This week on the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast, Michael Hernick, the financial mechanic, is joining me as we discuss this latest increase, what it means for borrowers, what are the chances of future rate increases, and what went into the latest increase. Hope you enjoy. This is the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast, the show that highlights Saskatchewan real estate. Looking to buy your first house, your next investment property? Subscribe to never miss an episode. Here's your host, Ron Caroni. Hello and welcome back to the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast, your home for all things real estate, all things Saskatchewan. If this is the type of content that you're looking for, make sure to like and subscribe to the video to never miss our weekly episodes that come out every single Monday. A big thing happened last week. We had the Bank of Canada raise their key interest rate again 25 basis points and here to join me on all matters of government state real estate michael hernick the financial mechanic uh michael thank you so much for for taking the time for this special episode as we do a little breakdown of bank of canada's 10th increase perfect thanks ron thanks for uh, having me on on the podcast again looking forward to it Michael is a past guest, uh, so some of you might might recognize him, but for anyone who's new to the channel, Michael, just give us a little background on yourself and your great YouTube channel as well. Sure, yeah, for sure. So my name is Michael Hernick. I have a Facebook and YouTube channel called The Financial Mechanic. We also have a local uh, real estate group here in Saskatchewan called uh, Saskatchewan Financial Independence Retire Early, so the FIRE movement through real estate. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, definitely reach out and join our group. Uh, our, we're, we've been growing quite a bit lately and uh, great to have the support. We have uh, bi-monthly in-person meetings and then the other bi-monthly uh, virtual meetings. So basically we'll do a virtual meeting one month and then an in-person meeting the other month. And uh, yeah, and we're also real estate investors here in Saskatchewan. And uh, so, yeah really well worth it. I've gone to those meetings. There's a lot of great collaboration and good masterminding that happens. So if you're in Saskatchewan and you're looking for a little taste of real estate investing, it's one of the great groups around for sure. All right, Michael. So the Bank of Canada, it, it was an expected increase, even though I think there were some variable rate mortgage holders with their fingers crossed saying, please don't do this to us one more time. But the Bank of Canada raises 25 basis points, bringing their key interest rate to 5%, their 10th increase. And we are now at the highest rate we've been in 22 years. Let me get your take on what are the factors the Bank of Canada looked into this when they said, all right, let's raise this rate again. For sure. Um, you know, we, we, we had discussed interest rates uh, briefly at the end of last year and sort of our forecast for what we would expect this year. Normally, when you look at what central banks look at is the economic factors, things like job growth, uh, GDP growth, and they sort of look at these different economic indicators to make a decision on whether they will raise the interest rates or not. I think it's important to take a step back and realize that we've seen nearly a 5x increase in interest rates. We were sub 1% interest rates previously, and we're at now, as you mentioned, 5%, which is a tremendous increase. Certainly, you know, anyone holding a variable rate mortgage, including myself, uh, you know, we're holding, you know, fingers crossed to see what will happen. And certainly they did raise the rate by 25 basis points. Um, and, you know, following the markets and doing the research, it, it, you know, the Bank of Canada has been very clear that they're, they're doing this because they see that the economy is in their eyes sort of doing well and they've brought in 60,000 new jobs. So they sort of said, you know, we have inflation still over 3% and our target inflation rate is 2%. So let's sort of bring in a little bit of a higher interest rate uh, to, to sort of slow down that inflation. And that's sort of been their goal is to use interest rates to cool down inflation. And they, it's certainly been working. There's no question about that. Um, but to get to that target 2%, it could be, it could be a little while till we get there. And very interesting that the Bank of Canada is surprised by the resiliency of the economy, by the job growth, by the, the rebound in real estate in, in many parts of Canada, not just in these kind of prairie provinces where, of course, prices are lower and you're seeing some capital flow there because of that. But you're also seeing rebounds in Toronto and Vancouver. So even though we've seen this massive increase in rates, the real estate market is still very strong due to low inventory and then also really strong job growth 
because of the amount of temporary for work te temporary foreign workers currently in the country and all of this is just continuing to boost demand so ratcheting it up again and i think what i was really surprised about with this is they did not rule out future increases at the beginning of this year there was almost some foreshadowing from the bank of canada that you know we are going to take a, a kind of wait and see approach as we kind of go through this year then we saw things happen in america with first republic and some banks going bankrupt and we saw kind of a, a fall in interest rates and even like a pause I, I think was what they said and i think now we're kind of going back into a place of maybe we will see more future rate increases so let, let me give you uh, i know this is kind of a hard thing to quantify and no one can really give an accurate prediction of this michael but Give us kind of the factors that will go into a future Bank of Canada increase, hold, or decrease. For sure. So like I said earlier, the Bank of Canada and central banks all around the world, they're really looking at economic data. The problem with looking at economic data at, at a sort of at a short term or immediate term is that Although the economy appears to be doing well in the in the interim, the question is when will the increased rates, if so, impact future uh, you know economic performance? And of course, no one can sort of predict that the banks do the best they the central banks do the best they can to do this. Um, so when we get into September, I believe it's just the first week of September there when they'll be meeting. Uh, for their next uh, meeting to determine what they're doing with interest rates. So they will be closely looking at uh, at economic data. They've made it very clear that they don't want to uh, raise interest rates too, too quickly to, to sort of avoid any kind of economic slowdown. I will say, though, it is important to note, although we do have a hot housing market and so forth, it can take up to 12 to 18 months to see the full effects of the interest rates. Remember, Interest rates were below 1%, and both personal and corporate debt at, are at all-time highs. And when you raise the interest rates over five times uh, in terms of the from where they were, there will be consequences. Now, have we seen any of those consequences? Sure, we've seen a little bit. Certainly in the U.S., you see uh, mortgage default rates uh, climbing slowly. In Canada, less so. It's a little bit happening, but you still, you still have strong housing market here in, in Canada. Um, and, you know, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. My, my thoughts are that, um, you know, certainly if the job growth numbers persist, where we're bringing in more jobs and we see that, that e the strong economic data is, uh, holding, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if we see another 25 basis point increase, certainly. Which is really insane. Cause I think even going back to last year, my full belief with a lot of these rate increases was that. If you're going to raise as fast and as hard as the Bank of Canada has, you're eventually going to break something. Now, so far, the economies really around the world for a lot of central banks that have increased these rates have been really resilient, have been able to take these increases on the chin. And a lot of it has been due, or at least according to the central banks, due to people's good savings and their ability to kind of dip into those savings to help them get them through these tough times. But even as you continue to kind of go on this path of increased rates, it's getting harder and harder for Canadian borrowers to take this. And my 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 kind of anecdotal take on this is at what point do the credit card defaults start to pile up as well as auto loan? Because from my experience, the last thing someone is going to default on is their mortgage. And that also ties in with incredibly low rental inventory that even if you get, if, even if you have to default on your mortgage, you have to live somewhere and there's just really nowhere for someone to go. And so he, uh, a little take and I'd love to get your thought on it, Michael, as as we see people get squeezed tighter and tighter. The reason we might have a hot job market here in Canada is you have more and more people who are taking part time, full time jobs in order to cover their expenses, which is, of course, helping to to heat a labor market when you have people working multiple jobs or looking for extra ways to, to earn income. I think that's a really, really important thing to think about. Consider what has happened other than the fact that interest rates have gone up. We also have inflation, uh, prices at the grocery store, prices at the pumps, prices for any type of goods and services have all gone up. But what's interesting is that wages have not sort of met the increase in borrowing and the cost of inflation. And for that reason, it's 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 something to certainly be considerate of. I think everyone can sort of comment on 
the fact that they are seeing less money sort of kept after they, you know, spend money on groceries and any sort of necessities and any discretional spending. And everyone is feeling the pain, not just from inflation, but certainly from the higher interest rates. And and and, and the in, the more interesting piece to sort of put on top of this is that the labor markets are so tight right now. Um, you know, even in my profession, in the accounting profession, you know, you have a lot of professional firms that are having an extremely difficult time hiring qualified, knowledgeable staff. It's just there's just a shortage of 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 qualified employees looking for that type of role, and and you throw higher costs on top of this. It's it it it, it is a little bit of a re recipe for disaster, but you know, it's it's something that I think we need to watch very, very carefully. And uh, so we'll see how all of this plays out. But, but certainly, it's it's more, it's more likely than not that the central banks are going to keep it inching that interest rate up until they sort of see the economic data suggest otherwise. And then here, here's just a personal take on it, Michael. We're not obviously professional economists, and none of the things that we're talking about here should be taken as such. But if we did see a, a recession or, or some sort of event that would cause the bank to start decreasing rates, how aggressively do you think they would do that if after we saw from COVID, we saw a really aggressive decrease. Now, do you think the Bank of Canada would take another approach like that? Or have they learned their lesson in the sense of not dropping too quickly, too fast? You know, it's the million dollar question is, are the rates going to go down? If so, when? From the correspondence I've seen and the research I've done on Bank of Canada and, and, and our neighbors down south, it, it it's very clear that their target inflation rate is around the 2% mark. And one of their main levers is interest rates. So I think everyone should brace for, for more likely than not for interest rates to inch up until we get to that point. It's, it is possible that they will hold the rate and sort of watch the inflation rate to see what happens. So we may, that may happen, but it is extremely unlikely from my from my uh, personal opinion and, and the research I've done, that interest rates are going to be cut uh, in the short term. In the medium to longer term, it's it's definitely on the table. Um, I think in order for the Bank of Canada in particular to do that, you would need to see uh, you know significant data in the economy to suggest you know that a cut in the interest rate is going to stimulate spending again and and purchasing. And right now, that what you have is you have you have kind of the opposite situation where although consumers and corporations and business debts are at all time highs, people are still spending money and the inflation is still there. So it, it's almost, it would almost have to be a shift in, in behavior, both personally and at, at the business level where we say, okay, you know, we're earning less money as a business or in the household, we need to cut spending, uh, you know, as particular in discretionary spending, and then you sort of have a slowing down of economy. At that circumstance, you you could definitely see it. But the the idea that we're going to see sub one percent interest rates may never happen again. You know, never say never, but uh, it doesn't seem like that's going to quite work out that way. All right. So Canadian borrowers, they're watching or listening to this and they're kind of scratching their heads because they're saying, all right, variable rates are, are, are maybe going up. But we've also seen fixed rates increase at the same time, too, even though we did see bond yields come down, which have a direct correlation with our fixed rates and kind of, in, uh, you know, have a, a correlation in whether we see those fixed rates go up or down. And so yesterday, um, we're recording this on Thursday, the day after the Bank of Canada uh, increase the rates. Um, yesterday, we saw bond yields come down, even after we saw the increase in the rates. So it wasn't really reflected in what we saw on those five-year fixed rates. But if we see bond yields come down, we might see that uh, come down. But usually, they're fairly correlated together that as the Bank of Canada rate goes up, so do bond yields. So if a let's take a purchaser, for example, do you have a take right now, Michael, if someone's looking at a 6.3% variable versus a 5.34% five-year fixed. Do you, do you have any thoughts on what someone should be doing as they're looking at interest rates right now? It's a very, very good question because we have a few renewals that we're dealing with uh, at the moment. And it's it, it, it's a difficult question. What I will say on the, on the commercial side is 
Um, from what we've seen, lenders are actually increasing the rates uh, on the shorter term instead of the longer term. Just so, and you're seeing this in what you just said. So the fixed term rates are actually lower than the variable rates. So what we've seen is the one and two year fixed rates on the commercial side are actually higher than fixing in a long term rate. What does that same on the residential? Yeah. What does that tell you? It tells you that the financial institutions expect rates to go down in the short to medium term in the next one to three years. That is basically what they're saying. Uh, and, and so, you know, it, it, it is drawing that picture. The question is, will that happen? Well, it could. Um, it certainly can. And and they may forecast, they may be forecasting that. And as you mentioned, the bond yields definitely impact that. But it's a difficult question. I mean, certainly if you lock in a 5.3% interest rate, I mean, you have to be thinking about will the interest rate fall below that, right? Or what's the chance we're going to see three, four, five percent interest rates, uh, or is it likely we're going to be around that six, seven percent range, you know, uh, over the next couple of years? What I would say is that um, if you're gonna, if you're considering locking in a rate, you have to think about what is what the probability of that is over the next one to three years. And what I mean, what I mean by that is it may be advantageous to lock in a shorter term rate at a slightly higher rate and wait to see, because it could be that let's say we do have economic data that suggests that the economy is slowing down and the Bank of Canada starts cutting rates. That would be an advantageous point to renew at a lower rate. The problem is, is if you fix in at six or 7% for let's even say five years, well, there is definitely a chance that interest rates will, will go down within the next five years. Uh, so those are the kinds of things that every borrower needs to be thinking of. Um, I, and, I, and I, For us, it's something that I still don't really have a clear answer to because I'm not sure. I, I have to be 100% honest. I didn't think the Bank of Canada and banks all around the world would be increasing rates this quickly, this fast, uh, and, and at, the, at the level they have been. There's, I, so I've, I think I and myself and others have, uh, that who, who were in that camp have sort of also seen, okay, well, we're here now. What's next? So I don't know if I have a firm answer, but those are the kinds of considerations that you know I, I would be thinking about. When I talk to lenders, I, I know I asked one lender, and I won't name who they are, but I had I asked my my representative there. I said, "What what is your opinion of people who currently have variable rates? What should they be doing?" And he's like, "Honestly, I think they probably should just be holding out and waiting to see what happens." Now, this is always an evolving story. That as we kind of get new data and things come and and we learn more information, you know that that advice will change. But it is interesting to say that there's not one clear answer right now because even on the residential side, I was doing rates for a client today. And I think we were sitting at 6.24% on a one year, and we just steadily went down. And then the, the cheapest rate available is that five year. But to your great point, Michael, if you lock in a long term fixed rate, and then we see rates come down to 3% in two years, well, you're going to be paying a much higher rate over a longer period of time. So it's very difficult for borrowers to decide right now, because it does seem counterintuitive to take a higher rate right now, you know, and, and in hoping that we're going to see lower rates in the future. So difficult time to be a borrower in Canada. And I don't know if there's a very clear answer other than look at your own personal situation and then factor things in like, how long do I plan on being in this mortgage? What do I prepayment penalties if I should break? And how flexible do I need to be moving into the future? And then kind of curtailing a solution based around that. And I did want to quickly touch on renewals because we're starting to see people who had very low rates now start to feel the pain. Now we had people who, you know, for a long period of time were sheltered from these increases because they were locked into a fixed rate. And now they're are renewing into these higher rates environments. And we're seeing people who either have to sell, refinance, or renew with their existing lender because there's no possible way that they can get qualified at, uh, at, a, at a new lender. So I just want to get your take, Michael. Do you have any advice or any, any, any thoughts on a person renewing or refinancing at this time? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that's exactly the one of the sort of overarching uh, things that, you know, anyone that is at a renewal, whether it be now in the next couple of years that needs to think about is, well, one, my payments are going to go up. So there's there's no question about that, especially if you locked in a, 
you know, sub 2% or in that 2 to 3% range, you're looking effectively at this time, as you mentioned, the rates, probably a double in the interest rates. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean your payment's going to double. So that's important to note um, because, of course, that's the interest outside of the principal. Uh, but you should expect uh, about a 50% increase at least uh, if, you know, around that range, uh, depending on where you locked in your rate uh, with uh, with your mortgage payments. And for you know for everyone that that's a huge change especially imagine if you had a two thousand dollar mortgage now and that's going to go up to closer to three thousand that's an extra thousand dollars that uh you have to now put towards your home so a couple things i think that uh you know you would want to consider is number one as you mentioned uh is it could you do a refinance and what you could do with that is one if you have some equity in your home you can pull that out but the second, which is, I think, more important to note is you can push the amortization out. So for instance, let's say you were in a five-year fixed and you're renewing now. Well, now effectively you have 20 years left on your mortgage. But if you refinance and sort of create a new mortgage and lock in whatever rate, or if you go variable and push the amortization out for another 25 years, your payments will go down. So, And, and I think this is one of the ways that... that I think behind the back door, I think banks are, will be dealing with this is push out the amortization, push out the amortization. I think if if I were to speculate, I think what's, you know, assuming, let's just assume that real estate prices are going to keep going up and we have this hot market and, and let's just say that this persists, okay? I do think one way that, you know, certainly the the financial institutions can deal with this, like I said, is the the conventional 25 year mortgage now may be 35 or 40 years now all of a sudden a home that maybe wasn't affordable at 25 year amortization for a 40 year amortization makes a lot more sense on paper with respect to debt servicing so that is one thing that i think borrowers should think about is is well is is that a is that an option of course you know, one of the goals is, is pers especially on your on your personal home is, you know, you want to pay that down. And that's, of course, a great goal to have is just, you know, if, if you're having difficulty making ends meet and, and you need that extra cash flow for, you know, personal living expenses and so forth. It's something that can really help a lot of uh, families and borrowers out is just push that amortization out, refinance to to a new mortgage or whether it be with the same lender and and drop those those payments and you know every every little bit counts so and i think that's something to consider but yeah you know like you said the the you know five year fixed rates it, i i would i would caution folks to really think about that because i think it is possible for rates to go down i just don't think it's going to happen personally in the next you know year or so so Awesome. Thank you for your takes on that, Mike. I think you make a great point about the, the pushing of the amortization because that does not mean that you have to add new money to your mortgage. It could mean that you're just dropping the amount of money that you're you know on track for making uh, during that year. So instead of paying your mortgage off in 20 years, you stretch it to 30. And then hopefully within the next you know five or 10 years, you're able to get back on track for your original schedule, but really important for you to be comfortable with your payments and making sure that you can stay in your house and not miss any of those important mortgage payments. A total thing for another episode, but do not miss your mortgage payments. Whatever you can do to avoid defaulting on your mortgage, very important for getting qualification for a loan in the future in your life. Um, last word to you, Michael, on interest rates. Do you have any last thoughts or should we move right into the uh, your, your advice for, for uh, we'll even say uh, uh, Michael from two or three years ago, but uh, we'll, we'll just end it on any last thoughts from the Bank of Canada? Um, no, I think I've said everything, uh, you know, that I, I think we needed to. I, I think, you know, it is possible for the Bank of Canada to 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 have a couple more interest rate increases. I don't think we're going to see you know seventy five basis point increases at a time. That's extremely extremely unlikely. It's more likely if the interest rates go up, it might be another twenty five basis points if it happens. So we'll watch closely as we get to September. Awesome. And we'll give a, a last piece of advice. I always like to ask people who've come on the podcast uh, a piece of advice for yourself, but you've been on a couple of times. So I'm going to throw you a what, what's a good book recommendation or a movie that you're watching right now, Michael, that you would uh, recommend for people? Oh, goodness. I never had time to think about this. A good <laughs> movie or a book. Um, I might need to circle back on this. I'm a big podcaster. So I, I like to listen to a lot of, uh, you know, uh, learn as much as I can through podcasts but yeah i'd have to i think i recommended rich dad poor dad that's an excellent book so i'll maybe throw a plug for that that's robert kiyosaki's book excellent book uh, um 
I don't know if there's any other movies, I guess. Um, yeah, I'd have to think about that. All right. No problem at all, Michael. You've given us a lot of great information here. So we'll let you off the hook if uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad is what you come up with. And that's a great read for sure. Michael, thank you so much for joining us and helping us uh, walk through what Bank of Canada increases mean, the chances of them in the future, and what Canadian borrowers can do to help make them through these uh, choppy waters that we're, we're all going through. So thank you so much for your expertise, Michael, and look forward to having you on again. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast. If you enjoyed it, if you found some value here, do us a favor and hit the like and subscribe button to never miss a future episode. If you're looking for help with a purchase, renewal, or refinance on your next mortgage transaction, I am a fully licensed mortgage broker in the province of Saskatchewan, and I would be more than happy to point you in the right direction. Until next week, I'm Ron Caroni, your Saskatchewan mortgage professional. Bye for now.